What's up guys, War History Geek here, and welcome back to another acquisitions video. Uh, so today I just got my package in from, I believe this was, so yeah, Sportsman's Guide. Um, so let's just get right into it. So our first item here, <coughs> excuse me, our first item here is a three pack of 30 millimeter um, shells, dummies of course, these are all plastic tips, as you can hear there. Um, for the price, I, I personally, I think I might have overpaid a little bit, uh, for just being super light, empty shells. I believe I paid like 20 something dollars for this, $22, 23, somewhere in there for these three shells. Um, so not like it's an incredible deal, but we do have a deal to be made there. Um, taking a look at the markings here, you can see. It's more of a modern computer printed text. Then you also have um, that right there. So very interesting. Um, these were used as uh, mainly anti or armor piercing. So they would have been used against lightly armored vehicles and fortifications and stuff like that. So I don't really have any larger shells like this in my collection. So I figured for the price, I'll pick up a couple, add them to the collection. All right, so that's all for those there. Next up, we have the 90s era uh, U.S. military VAR cards or visual air aircraft recognition cards. So these would have been issued to soldiers. Um, this one is dated 1990, so the early 90s. And these are basically flashcards to memorize um, what the different aircraft are flying around at that time period. So both enemy and ally. Um, this is just a sticker from, uh, Sportsman's Guide. That isn't an original issue sticker. However, I believe this might be original packaging. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be pulling these out now. I'm going to try and preserve the packaging as best as I can. Um, so I will get back to you with that. See you in a minute. All right, guys, and I'm back. Here you can see the packaging is off. And let's take a look at these cards. So as you can see, we have the Free World Forward Area Aircraft, or otherwise known as Allied. Um, distribution Restriction and Destruction Notice on the back. Let's see here. Destruction Notice. Destroy by any method that will prevent disclosure of the contents or reconstruction of the document. So very interesting there. Um, distribution, U.S. government agencies, yada, yada, yada. And then it says here that we're going to have three different views of, I believe it was 18 different aircraft. So, um, like for instance, right here, we're kind of looking at the backs. I'm going to try and keep it in the same order. I took it out of the packaging, but like you would have the bottom view of this helicopter and then you'd have, it's the Mangusta A129. So very interesting there. And then um, towards the back of the deck here. Let's see. We have this. So I'm going to flip that upside down, put it over there. Department of Defense. That one's just a blank placeholder. We have the zone chart. So let's see here. I guess it's just literally a map. Um, and it points out specific cities where there's uh, major cities. So I guess that's interesting. Time zone chart. Here we have weights and measurements. So again, interesting. Not sure why they would include that but okay and then a calendar so that is the um var deck and i'll move on to the next item see you then all right guys and next we have the 75m hungarian gas mask so this one does have a uh, significant amount of damage to it. As you can see, a cracked lens. 
Um, and then just a lot of storage damage. So there's a lot of oxidation, as you can see around this eye ring. Um, it's a size one. So it's going to be, I believe it's going to be the largest size. That's how the German ones go. Um, but it's possible it's also the smallest. Um, and this one, as far as I'm aware, is completely unissued. So we're going to be not only just taking a look at what I got, but also going to be unpackaging it. And um, I'll probably be taking this clip out of this video and including it in um, a future video when I do a detailed look at this. So uh, just a look at the gas mask. These were used until the end of the Cold War. Uh, I don't know the exact years off the top of my head. Um, it's a civilian defense mask. And these are often referred to as like the 76M, but it, it, that's just wrong. So not sure where that came from, but... Before we do that, we also have this filter here, which is still wrapped in the original packaging. So I'm going to be carefully cutting that open and removing it and then saving the packaging. And then lastly, we have the bag, which again, sadly, has a lot of oxidation on these buttons. So I'm going to try and remove that. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Let's start by just pulling these things out. So this, I actually don't know what this is for. Um, you have like a cinch up here at the top, and then it's rubberized with a clasp down at the bottom. Um, so I don't know what these are for exactly, but it came with the mask. So if anybody knows, feel free to leave that down in the comments. So interesting, I guess. Um, next, I've been very careful not to pull any of this out because I wanted to save it for the video. Um... But here we go. Probably the first time this is pulled out since production. So here you can have the headband. This is the headband here. Here you have the neck strap, the tightening strap, and then this paper here, which I don't know if there's anything in there or not. I'm going to be very careful to pull it out. Yeah, it appears to just be packaging material. So I'll save that. And uh, yeah, the inside is actually in pretty decent condition. It's the outside really that's all messed up. Uh, here you can see the strap doesn't fall down on me. Here you can see some markings on the inside there. It looks like 1979 is the year of production. So this makes this a... Um, if this is a 75M, it makes it an earlier helmet. Or not a helmet, uh, sorry, an earlier gas mask. Um, as I'm fairly certain they were used until the 90s. Um, the rubber is a little hard, so I'm going to try and use some WD-40 to loosen it up and make it more pliable again. You can see here, like, that doesn't flex at all. Um, so just an interesting gas mask there. Um, or maybe, I don't know, this is, it's not like it's in a bad shape, so maybe I will just leave it as is. I'm not planning on wearing it, so. Very cool. Looking forward to finding a place for that. Uh, let's see here. Next, we have the filter. So, I will be carefully slicing this open down here on the bottom. Try not to damage the paint. So this is the first time this has been opened. go the tape is cut so let's unfold this packaging material here again being very careful I want to save all this packaging material and there we go a brand spanking new filter it's in perfect no oh, come on there's a dent right there but other than that it's in very nice condition. All the paint is intact. It's still sealed on the bottom as well. 
and I'm going to keep it that way, unissued. Um, unscrewing the top cap here. Excellent condition on the filter. So, not sure how they were storing the gas mask compared to the filter, but excellent job storing this filter. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put this on the mask now and see how it looks all together. So, unscrew the cap here. Set that off to the side. That's going to be stored in the storage bag. And go off camera, screw this bad boy onto the mask. All right, there we go. So now we have a complete... Please excuse my light up there. Now we have a complete Hungarian gas mask. So very nice. I'm very happy to add this to the collection. It's in pretty good condition. I'm going to see what I can do about the oxidation. Um, but before we move on to the next item, I just want to take a look at the storage bag here. So lower this down here. So here we go. It's not terribly interesting. You have the carrying straps on the inside here. Um, it has the button snaps that, as you can see, as I said before, has a lot of oxidation. And you can see where it was being stored, stacked on top of the other ones with the rust on the back of the pouch here. So, very interesting. Um, I believe there's a pocket down in the bottom of this as well. Um, so I'm going to figure out what I'm going to put in there. But yeah, I'm going to use this bag to store all these extra parts and the storage and all that so all right so let's move on to the next item i'll see you then all right guys and i'm back uh, after a lot of fighting i managed to slip on the cover um it doesn't look perfect and in my opinion i actually prefer without the cover because the cover makes it look you know kind of off but here we go um so that's the cover uh, this is referred to as the M89 cover. Um, and it started with a Yugo star on the front, and then later on uh, they took it off once Yugoslavia began to fall apart. Um, so yeah, that's the outside there. And then on the inside you can see it's tied into the liner system with four sets of string. Uh, so yeah, that's really about it for this acquisitions. Uh, episode. Uh, just a small amount of items that I didn't like, doesn't necessarily fit in anywhere specifically. I just thought, hey, they're cheap, they're cool. I'll go ahead and throw them in there. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. And when you're in that area, hit the subscription button and notification bell. Um, I have plenty of other content like this coming in the near future. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.